welcome back to the Dixie D'Amelio early late night show. Today I have the special James Charles. Hi sisters. I finally got the invite. Months later. Are you waiting for the plane or you just don't know what to say? Both. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here today. I know, I'm excited to Last have you. Last time we were on camera together, things didn't go so well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, dinner with the D'Amelios. Yeah. My respect for James. Through the roof. You know, getting those comments was, like I, of course, love when people are like, oh my God, we love James, we fan James. <laughs> but I hated that I was getting those comments at the expense of you guys. Like it was so, it, that whole situation was so frustrating. It's good when it's good on you. Cause when the video first came out, I was getting all the love. So I'm like, Dixie's parents are so mean. They hate her. So everyone's like, love for Dixie, whatever. And then it just switched. It flipped hardcore. It was really weird. Like the whole situation, obviously the dinner was such a good time. Like the food, in my opinion, was absolutely incredible. I probably have a little bit more of a vast taste palette than you and Charlie maybe, but that's fine. You guys are a lot younger. Also, like I said the same thing because I got paparazzi when we went to Boa a few weeks ago for our family dinners all together. We got paparazzi outside, and everyone, the paparazzi were like, James, what did you think about this whole situation? And I'll say the same thing now that I said then. The whole thing definitely got taken way out of proportion. I can see why, however, from the public's perspective, why it turned into what it did, but I don't think the reaction should have been as harsh. The situation between me and Charlie with the whole followers thing, like, was an innocent joke. Like, I was not calling her out, I was not dragging her. It was just a simple, like, <laughs> joke and also like think, think about it this way right if you're like a restaurant for example say you're a pizza shop okay you're a pizza shop and one day you sell 97 pizzas great and your manager at the end of the day is like good job team good job staff you killed all the pepperonis all the sausages all the cheeses today we love you so much you know we beat our sales goal for today let's shoot for 100 pizzas tomorrow. That doesn't mean you don't appreciate the 97 other pizzas and customers that you sold to that day. It just means you're pushing yourself and your business to grow and to set a new milestone. There's nothing wrong with that in any way, shape or form. So the whole situation was so, it was just dumb. And then your whole situation with the snails, like I don't care if Gordon Ramsay put a snail in front of me, I'm not eating it. I'm not, e I'm not eating it and I love Gordon Ramsay, I stand. And Chef Aaron May was absolutely incredible. I can't even believe you ate it in the first place. And what people don't know with reality television is sorry to break it to you it's scripted it's planned it's like you have a storyboard because like that's how nobody's gonna watch it if it's boring hello so the team was behind the camera telling Dixie to try the snail she ate the snail didn't like the snail and therefore threw up the snail also like obviously your team was in control of the edit like if that was a moment I watched it before it went out I was like Huh? Well, I think the point is everyone's content team or everyone's editors are of course looking out for their best interests, right? Like if you were, you know, if you snapped or were having a bad day or were actually being rude to somebody, your team is going to see that and it's going to be like, cut that out of the video immediately because they're going to know that it makes you look bad. But that was kept in the video because everyone genuinely thought it was funny and everyone here knew mm -hmm. that it wasn't an actual, you know, like shady moment. Yeah. But regardless, I think this, I, once again, I think this is blown out of proportion, but I do think, although it sucked, it was a really, really valuable learning lesson for you and Charlie to understand that even if something is an innocent joke to you guys, or even if something feels, you know, fine behind the camera, you always have to be super, super cognizant of how the public is going to react to something. Cause it might not be, it might not be the same sentiment. And although this sucked, I think that you guys will definitely be more careful in the future of how you come across yeah. you know on camera because obviously none of us ever want this to happen again definitely but i'm just proud of you guys for handling it and getting out and so what i think the problem with me personally that i need to work on is my sense of humor mm -hmm. is very sarcastic which does not come across on the internet no i mean my, i'm very much the same way before we close this thought i think one thing that you should know and be cognizant of is like you shouldn't be changing who you are for anybody. Like if you're sarcastic and you have a dry sense of humor, you should absolutely continue being sarcastic, continue having a dry sense of humor. Cause there's a huge group of people out there like myself and like many other people who love that. Like, like you shouldn't apologize or change who you are. Just like ever. if you understand it. Just understand what the, how, what the public might think about it and just figure out how to bring everyone else in on the joke, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So James. Yes. You are very successful in many areas. Thanks. <laughs> and makeup. Yeah. I want to talk to you about makeup and all that, but first my mom had a question that she wanted me to ask you. Okay. So do you like walk into a room and notice people's makeup and kind of 
observe it and I question it. I definitely pay attention to everyone's makeup. I don't judge, yeah. that's for sure. But like, I always like notice. I mean, it's my job obviously, so I'm always like staring at people's faces, mm -hmm. observing. But like, if you looked at, well, like when you looked at me when you walked in, uh -huh. before you did my hair and makeup, uh -huh. you like. Well, yeah, because you literally looked like that you uh, were wet and then touched a toaster and got electrocuted. Your hair was literally, it looked terrible. No, I know. You looked fried. <laughs> Burnt. Do you ever like give people advice if you see them or you just kind of like, oh, that's cool? No. I mean, if I somebody, guess that's like anything. If somebody asks, like, oh, what like what could I improve on or like how could I do my brows differently? Like then of course I'll try to give some constructive criticism, mm -hmm. but like I've never, I don't really do that like unwarranted. Everyone does their makeup in different ways. Mm -hmm. And regardless, like the whole point of makeup is feeling confident and feeling beautiful and expressing your art. So like. Even like my definition of good makeup is not everybody's definition of good makeup. Somebody might feel the best they've ever looked and feel the most confident and I'm not in a, any position to tell somebody otherwise, you know? Mm -hmm. Who's like your number one inspiration currently? For makeup? I have a few. Um, I definitely think like as, like as a cliche of an answer it is, I think Kylie always looks amazing. Her makeup artist, Ariel, is like truly one of the best of the best and he just knows how to do a face so good like I always look at her photos and like oh, like I I don't know mm -hmm. like the makeup look that I have on today literally did you see the video that she posted this morning when like her and all of her sisters like the whole family like FaceTime people mm -hmm. so yesterday I was out to lunch and my phone was ringing my purse and I was like oh who's calling me pick it up and it's it literally Kim Kardashian West FaceTime call and I was like what the heck like I was wondering so I was, who was, was making like, the calls what the yeah it was Kim who's okay. calling and I was like what the heck because I've me and Kim text every once in a while but I've we've never FaceTimed. So I was like, what? Like, did her number get leaked? Like, is this hacked or something? And I answered it and I was like, what? It was... What is going on? That, and I was like, oh my God, what the heck is going on? But literally this makeup look that I have on today is the one that Kylie wore yesterday. Cause I looked at her stories after and she looked so beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna do that. It looks amazing. I don't know. You look gorgeous. Thank you. I just feel like her artist is, Ariel is really, really talented and always just has like a really good, makeup but in terms like that's like pretty makeup in terms of like creative makeup I feel like Abby Roberts love her the absolute most she's incredible um I'm trying to think of people like off the top of my head that I just really really love following there's a bunch on Twitter mm -hmm. but yeah I'm always I like always love looking at other people for inspiration and stuff oh there's a lot of videos of you on YouTube where it's like James Charles annoying someone for this amount of time yeah. or someone annoying James Charles for this mm -hmm. amount of time why are you like the headline of that uh, I think because, I mean, I started off my career like as a meme. Mm -hmm. Like from day one, like Flashback Mary, like the senior photos and stuff, like everything that I've always done has always become like, coach, like senior photos, Flashback Mary, the Coachella photos, womp womp womp, like ev <laughs> literally everything that I do like is memeable. And like, that's part of like the marketing of like why I'm here mm -hmm. still today. Like I, I don't mind it. So like I like being a meme and stuff. So I just feel like I'm an easy, Target. You've obviously had a lot of highs and lows, and when you're at your lows, like, have you ever just wanted to quit and never go back? All the time. I mean, it happens, it, yeah, definitely. But once again, it's like, it's about having a good group of friends around you, a good team around you, and you loving what you're doing to help like push you through. And it's also like really important too, like if you are dealing with something that's hard, right? Like, it's really important to learn how to deal with that like in private. Cause like the second that you start, and I talked to Charlie about this a lot, the second that you start letting people know that it's hurting you or crying or like posting about being upset or hurt, mm -hmm. um, it, it lets people know that what they're doing is working. Like it's, it's, let me, now let me clarify. There's nothing wrong with standing up for yourself or like talking about your feelings and emotions every once in a while. Like absolutely, that mm -hmm. is our right as human beings and no feelings should ever be invalidated no matter how many followers you have. But it's really important to, you know, like if you're doing that, it's important to stand up for yourself and stick up for yourself and like, once again, be proud of who you are, be proud of what you're doing. Or if something is wrong, like own it and apologize and move forward, right? And be a better person. But it's, it's really important to not let the haters, I hate saying that, but it's like, it's so important to not let the haters get to you. Your stepsisters. The stepsisters. Because if you do, like it lets, the, it, they're, they are gonna keep going. Like they're going to keep digging and digging and hating and hating and leaving comments because it gets them attention and it, and it, like it's working. Do you have like a way where you think you can connect with your fans the best? 
Like, where do they find you the best to talk to you? I would definitely say Twitter as well. I mean, I'm also on stories all the time. Like, I, every single morning I wake up and I take an Instagram story, like, saying, good morning, you guys. Like, I tell them about what I'm doing with my day that day, any fun announcements that are happening. Like, I'm definitely very, very active with my followers on stories and stuff and just keeping them in the loop with my life. And then Twitter is definitely where, like, I interact most and reply to people. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself ever taking a break from the two YouTube videos a week? Anytime soon? Um... With a few of the projects that I'm working on in 2021, it's definitely going to be a lot of filming and production, which is a good thing. So I don't plan on taking a break now mm -hmm. or yet, but it, I might end up going down to one within the, but I don't know when. I think it's really hard. Like doing two videos a week is so, so challenging to always come up with new concepts and new ideas. Mm -hmm. And like, I've been doing this for almost five years now. Yeah. Which is, it's like crazy to even think that I've been, I've like lasted this long. And then like makeup too, there's only so many makeup videos that you can do, which is why though I've really enjoyed branching out and doing gaming videos or more lifestyle videos or vlogs or just like behind the scenes type stuff. Like I really, really enjoy it. And I'm so, so, so grateful that I've been able to build a fan base that is willing to watch mm -hmm. those type of videos too and not necessarily just the makeup. Honestly, I've found that like more recently, my like non-makeup videos are doing better than my <laughs> makeup videos are you a holidays person i love christmas i love thanksgiving and i love christmas okay um i'm not a very holiday person which is so i know it's so awful and cringy but i'm it's just never been me I'm like i've never been one to like decorate and stuff because then i hate decorating and then taking the decorations down didn't you like, have like the biggest tiktok for your christmas decorations well yes that was last year but I, but I didn't do that. We, that, that was for a Christmas party that I did with my fans. So we hired a decoration company to come and do the whole house. Uh, but I'm doing that again this year. So I just yeah. know because you had like 4 billion views on it or whatever. It's the second most viewed TikTok of all time. Everyone always like, why does this TikTok have so many views? I have no idea. I was like, did he buy the views? No, baby. Like I would, there's, hi Noah. Hi Noah. How are you? Um. Where's my forehead kiss? So, um, I don't know if you saw Noah's YouTube video. What YouTube video? When he did a lie detector test. I didn't watch this one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the second one. What was it? My intro video. Well, he did a lie detector test. Okay. And he has a crush on you. Oh. That came out in the test. You don't see that. No? <laughs> Do you have a crush on me? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> No, I did a lie detector thing, and um, one of the questions was, are you sexually... I don't know who asked, who asked it. I think your dad. Was it? I think so. Period. Please stand Mr. Bat. He said, are you, he's like, <laughs> are you sexually attracted to uh, James Charles? And I said, no. I'm like, James is a great friend. And then the guy doing the test said... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of lie detector tests, I did a video, and I didn't say this, but Noah said if it gets two million likes, we have to do a lie detector test, so I'm doing that tomorrow. It got two million likes? That's famous. That is famous. What are you gonna ask each other? I'm terrified. I didn't do anything, but like I'm- And you should definitely ask, are you sexually attracted to James Charles again? I will. And see if the results are consistent. Because <laughs> if they are, if they They're are, consistent. we might have a problem here. <laughs> and by we have, might have a problem, I mean we might have a problem. Mm -hmm. Do you have any fun questions for me since your girlfriend here didn't prepare much? How long is this video? I'm kidding. Are you sexually attracted? Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Am I sexually Everyone, oh my god. <laughs> I remember when we first started talking, Dixie you used to always tell me that I was hot. And I always appreciated that. You are. We'd be a hot couple. I know. You'd be more of the girl though. Yeah, that's okay. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much, James, for being such an amazing guest. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being an amazing friend. Aw. And don't forget to watch our, and a few extra, Christmas videos, which will be coming out. The 22nd. The 22nd. Super excited. And our lie detector test, which will be the next video. And anything you want to plug? Um... I mean, not really. Just if you want to follow me on any of my social media accounts, they're all just James Charles. I post two videos a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. Fun, makeup, entertaining content. And, uh... 
And you can follow me on all my socials at Dixie D'Amelio and Snapchat at Dixie-D'Amelio. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, Thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Who else you want to see on the show? You follow me if you want. No, 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 no babe. <laughs> this isn't your episode. Okay. You already had your turn.